you guys, it, it bears repeating what you see on the screen is tonight is about how to level up your note investing business with over 500,000 in prime plus 1% unsecured top tier bank business credit lines or loans. And we'll discuss how that applies, uh, when to use, when, for, when note buyers should use credit line versus a loan in the next 100 days. I know it sounds difficult today. I was on a client call. One of my clients who's been with me for like 87 days, just got her first $100,000 approval and got 50 thousand cash on the barrel head to start using the next day so we are um, but the approval is a uh, is a hundred grand and so when i talk about limits i want you guys to understand that these credit limits are like um think of it as a construction loan the construction loan they don't give it all to you at once they give you a little bit you know so you can do the foundations and the and the uh the framing etc they don't want if you go buy a maserati they're not going to give you any more money so they want to know how you treat their money. And so that's what, but the approvals are going to be for a, around a hundred a hundred thousand dollars where that exceeds goes up to $250,000 per line. And we're talking three to five banks per line is when you have full docs that we can take in. But right now we're talking about at least 300 grand in unsecured stated income, you guys unsecured stated income that's without requiring collateral tax returns or financials here's a little shock and awe for you what do note buyers have in common with the adult entertainment industry fortune tellers and casinos and gambling sites yeah you have a lot in common and it's unfortunate because you're all restricted industries for unsecured stated income business bank credit lines. So my promise to you today is that some of you are going to leave here a little worried because you didn't know the rules of the game. And it's not your fault, but you didn't know what you were getting into. And even when you opened up a business bank checking account, you might be definitely gonna leave here a little annoyed, like what just happened? I don't understand why we didn't learn this in high school, college, or at least sooner, right? Some of you are going to be a little stressed because you have been building banking relationships with someone who will never, ever, ever lend you money, right? Maybe a credit card, but what's 10K when you need 500 grand? And I promise you, some of you are gonna leave here a little pissed off because it's just not right. Us, these industry withholds, that's what I call them. These industry withholds just aren't right. But here it's the, uh, we're, we're, we're going all the way. So what I do want you to know is there's hope. There's not only hope, there is a system. And this system is designed to navigate the minefield of business financing and funding and that's what we're here today so i can show you how to get a portfolio of business bank credit lines and loans five hundred thousand within 100 days and the strategies i know they work because they work for multifamily, fix and flippers buy and holders wholesalers every business owner who implements these steps but what's interesting is i've done my own 2.4 million dollars in these very loans and lines of credit, right? 2.4, and I'm not done. So I want somebody to catch up with me. All right, I also know it works because just like Eddie said, I've helped my clients get over 300 million in these funding approvals. Um, and I, I have a little surprise for you at the end. So please, please uh, uh, stay to the end I, because um, one of your own note schoolers is one of my summa cum laude, graduate amazing funding uh um, um she's just terrific and i'll be sharing uh her story with you not just that the 300 million is awesome but the way we get there what we do there we have we have 
proof of hundreds and hundreds of clients who continue to find success, who are wowed by even just what they learn in our, what we call our business funding master course, which is kind of the, the is, are the learnings to the strategies and the tools that you implement. So we have tons and tons of people who have just been uh, wowed at what is possible when you know the rules of the financing and funding game, right? All right, so who's FICO? Everybody know who FICO is? Everybody know who FICO is? All right. They're more than just your, your credit score. But what's interesting is FICO software is used in over 90% of all personal and business funding decisions. And FICO has validated this process. So what I'm going to share with you tonight has been validated, but I'll let them speak for themselves. Merrill Taylor knows more about how to use the FICO score than most FICO employees do. FICO provides the analytics and creates the score, but Merrill shows business owners how to apply the FICO metrics in their financial lives. Merrill's approach is distinctive and far more impactful than the myriad of credit and funding services and personal finance websites. That's Glenn Grossman, who was the uh, who is the business originations group leader. Now, interestingly enough, we think that's awesome. Guess what? David Smith, if we read in there, David is a key account partner and small business segment leader with FICO. He's the subject matter expert for liquid credit. That's the SBSS is your business funding credit score. And he is the subject matter expert at FICO for this. But not only that, you guys, and I'm so happy to share this with you, so so proud that that, that man right there on your screen, that's David Smith. Guess what? He comes uh, every month. We meet eight times, twice a week. He comes to my Funding Hackers group coaching session to weigh in, talk to my community, and, and help them solve, give us lender updates, up to the minute lender updates. David Smith. So when I say FICO validated, I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke, you guys. I'm telling you those team members come here because in a, just a 30 second story. So I'm at a business conference and I'm sitting down to dinner. Gentleman comes up with his plate starts eating with us and we're all talking about what we do. And uh, he he leans over and he says, tell me a little more about your business model. And I said, well, I, I help business owners become fundable. And you're like, keep keep explaining. And he goes, well, sometimes let the, the borrowers don't know what lenders need to approve them. Lenders aren't telling them, but they might just be missing a few points here, or a few borrower behaviors are off that if they just knew the truth, they could get approved. Lenders win, the borrowers win, everybody wins. And he goes, my name is Will Lansing, the CEO of FICO. I would like to have you meet with my score development team. It ended up being both personal and business. Meet with my score development teams to so that we can help. We, we can't tell you all the, all the goodies, but we want to help make borrowers fundable. Guess who FICO's clients are? Yep, lenders. So lenders win if they have fundable borrowers. Is this making sense, you guys? Are you getting this? So, so this is how I got introduced to everybody at FICO because they said they want fundable borrowers for their lender clients. That's well, we do something together. That's going to be you. Now, this says two, but I but Eddie mentioned a third. We're gonna that we're gonna mention. Serious real estate investors, especially note buyers, faced three major problems in the market, especially when it comes to getting low cost money, not high cost money, hard money, et cetera, et cetera. Big problem number one: tougher funding approvals. These funding approvals. Access to lowest cost bank business credit lines is shrinking, just like a uh, just like a target. When there's prosperous times, then you can get funding on the outer rings, right? Those approval rings. Now, lenders are not going to tell you this, but remember, when I go to FICO World, where I met, uh, where I met Glenn and David, 
When I go to FICO World, and by the way, in two weeks, I go to FICO 24, and it's going to be in San Diego, and I'm meeting with over 4,000 lenders and their underwriting teams, et cetera. When, <laughs> so I get to hear the shop talk. <laughs> I literally get to hear the shop talk about what borrowers are, lend, uh, uh, what, what lenders think about borrowers. And it all distilled down into two thoughts. There are prey or you're a partner. How do you tell the difference of what you are? Prey is when you get small approvals at high interest. That means, hey, we don't know anything about you. You're not fundable. We, we're, we're using the outer rings to give you some test money. And by test money, I'm talking, if you get a 20 or $30,000 approval, but it's at 26% these days, 22% best, your prey. Partners are when you're getting 100,000 to 250,000 at prime plus 1%. You follow me? Everybody with me? Now you know you're a partner. So these outer ring approvals are no bueno. That's not what we're after. But we're still is that the second the economy is stressed, those those approvals on the outside rings disappear because the target got smaller, right? And if the target is smaller, what works in prosperous times is not going to work here. So we want to go from this, these outer rings, to bullseye borrowers. We want to become business borrowers that strategically know how to partner with lenders. How many of you would like to be a partner with the top tier, top 10 banks in this country? Okay, prime plus 1%. So this is what it means to get fundable. When you go from this to this, that is what fundability means. You're approval ready. You're, you've done everything necessary to make sure that your borrower profile is exactly what a lender wants to look at. And that's what that's what Will Lansing, it's, uh, uh, CEO of FICO, wanted for his lenders. And we're delivering it, you and I together. So... This also makes you an ideal customer. You want to be an ideal customer? You want to actually tr trigger positive results when, with every lender that you work with? That's what a bullseye borrow is. But not only that, you get the best approval rates and terms. That's why I can say <laughs> prime plus 1%. I didn't change the title of ours, but guess what? We just had a prime plus uh, a plus half a percent uh, that that approval today prime plus half percent. Guess what? So now I'm saying prime plus one percent or lower, because lenders will lend to fundable borrowers. Now, interestingly enough, you get the best rates and terms in any economy. When the target shrinks, you're still fundable. Are you? Are you? Are, is this making sense? We got to be those bullseye borrowers. We got to have that tight approval pattern, right? Well, that just means more cash in our pockets. We get, uh, when, when we meet the lender guidelines, we get more, better, faster, cheaper, faster, higher credit line and loan approvals. Now, big problem number two, as we mentioned kind of at the, at the front, yep, you guys have been blacklisted, especially note buyers. Some lenders, if you secure the hell out of it, they will lend to uh, real estate investors, not note buyers. You guys have been blacklisted in this entire this list. There's actually 40. I just copied it out of out of the list uh, uh, on the government regs. Um, but what right there? Real estate investing is next to horoscopes, adult entertainment, gambling, payday lending, credit restoration, door to door sales, cryptocurrency, etc. Even your name can be a funding killer. It'll just kick you out of the, kick you out of the game. So take a screenshot of this, you guys. Take a screenshot of this. If your business name has any of these words in it, you are already not fundable. A lender. When you go to open up your checking account, you you give them your uh, your your secretary of state documentation for the articles, and it says any one of those words, you very well might see the countenance change 
of the loan officer or, or, or the banker. They'll be like, oh, well, we can't lend to you. It's crazy, but it, it's, it's true. So bottom line is that to be highly fundable, you have to have a qualified fundable entity that separates you from what you do. And we're going to cover that a little bit later when I start walking you through what this, this system looks like. Number three is that top tier lenders don't lend to small note operators. They don't do it. They'll, they'll huge hundred million dollars or more credit lines for, for um, hedge funds, not for you. And so we're just left trying to scrape together using our self-directed IRAs. Maybe some of us are using our insurance policies. Uh, it's cash value of our insurance policies. There's a number of strategies, but what if you had, you could go to a bank and literally get two, $300,000 worth of loans and just buy them out. And these are five to seven year terms amortized over 15 years. You think you could flip those notes or, uh, or make them uh, performing notes and pay that loan off at a premium? Guys, this is magic. This is straight magic. So let me introduce you to the solution. Those are the problems. The solution is easy. I call it the Smart Co Velocity Funding System. This business funding system, it, well, let's look at what Smart Co means. It, it's strategic. It builds a fundable entity around you, not what you do, note buying or real estate. It's methodical. It uses proven FICO validated steps to take your entity from where you are now to being a predictable funding approval machine. Listen to those words, guys, that it's not a predictable funding approval machine because you are the one who is uh, between you and your business. That combination creates the magic. And we're going to discuss both of those. You're approval ready. Optimize your entity to meet the most stringent funding approval guidelines. And it's timeless, just like the big target or the small target. If you are that center point borrower, that, that bullseye borrower, you're getting the best rates and terms. And so you lenders will lend to you regardless of what's going on in the market. There was only one six month period in 2008 where the bank stopped lending at all. So all of my clients at the time, no, nothing was available. But guess who they started lending to the second, the nanosecond that they started lending? Who do you think they lent to? Bullseye borrowers. And my clients, one of which is here, 14, 15 years later, is still trying to compete with me. He blew past me. He's got $3.6 million in these credit lines all the way through uh, the great crash and building for the last 14 years. And he's not even in a hurry to do it. He just, it, one time, <laughs> great story. We're in Santa Monica. We're in Santa Monica on a trip. I become very good friends with a number of my clients um, because this is a lot of fun. And, um, and they get really happy. One client, um, I helped him get his sailboat and his beach house in Monterey. And so now we've been sailing and he invites me um, scuba diving um, off of his sailboat. So in this case, we're in Santa Monica and the guy goes, hold it, Bank of Santa Monica? I don't have a credit line there. So we stop the car. He goes in and gets an application because there's things, you don't just fill it out and apply. There are a couple of things you need to do to build that relationship. And I'm going to show you some of those things tonight. Would that be okay with you? I'm just going to show you a few of those things tonight. But the magic is that he's just picking banks off the street saying that I don't have, uh, I don't have, I, I don't have a credit line from the uh, Bank of Santa Monica. So anyway, how does it work? Well, there's two parts, the person, uh, business and personal. So first we optimize your business to maximize your funding approvals, optimize the business to maximize funding approvals. So Here's the problem. 
Most real estate investors are frustrated or angry that they don't know what lenders are looking for to get approved for these $500,000 credit lines in such a short time as even 100 days, okay? And your real estate trainees and mentors don't have the knowledge to teach about it. Now, so the problem is we don't know what it's needed. We don't know. So what is the solution? I call it the uh, the forensic fundability audit. Now, some of us get scared by audit, but no. Uh, I, I, am, I am going to evaluate it, all the things necessary through the eyes of a uh, through the eyes of an underwriter. So review your income and assets, your banking relationships, even your business entities to find all the possible funding opportunities. I collect the data to determine your approval readiness right now, and then compare your situation against lender criteria. Then we make a plan to get from A to B. It's that gap that's killing us, you guys. That gap keeps you from getting the money that you need. So we build that plan and I remove all doubt about what a lender needs before you even submit an application. You don't get go do a, an application until I know that it is going to be a, a yes. And we have over 95%. It's like 95.7% is our average approvals on the first time. Now, second problem is most real estate investors are annoyed that they learn that there's a way to set up your business, but nobody ever taught them. Nobody taught you that there is a way to set up your business to be fundable, but you're already blowing up your chances. We already talked about the name being in your way, but there are a myriad ways in which you literally fill out your uh, your social security application for uh, an articles of incorporation or or organization, and you're literally telling lenders, don't lend to me. Thank you very much. I don't need money. I don't want money, so don't lend to me. You're saying that on the paper without even knowing it, all right? So what do we do about that? The solution is what we call the QFE candidate selection process. And so what we do is we evaluate your business entities to see which one is most qualified from the lender's perspective. Then we compare your entity against the third party business funding databases to see if it's viable because you may have already stepped on all the landmines. <clears throat> I'm getting ahead of myself. There are 19 business databases that when you hit submit, a lender checks all of them. And if you've got bad data, wrong data, or unfundable data in any of those databases, you get a big fat hairy no. And I'm not going to let that happen to you. So we implement the most fundable entity strategies for the fastest time to funding. We pick the entity that's going to get the, us the most money, the fastest, and we guarantee you're never going to waste years of time working with a bank that is never going to lend to you guys. Ah, all right. Next problem. Most real estate investors are pissed off for not being taught that you have to separate who you are from what you do. You walking in as a note buyer or real estate investor is one more way in which you say, yep, don't lend to me. I don't want money. Thank you very much. Now, listen carefully to my words because one is highly fundable and one is not. I am a, I'm a note buyer when you walk in and talk to a banker. I am a note buyer. Number two, I am a strategic, I am a strategic entrepreneur who has chosen various types of business, uh, 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 business um, uh, enterprises to make as wealth strategies. I am an entrepreneur who has chosen numerous different uh, 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 wealth strategies to build my wealth and fortune. Which one of those is fundable and which is not? Notice one separates 
what you do from who you are. Lenders want to lend to the strategist, you guys, to the, the person who makes the decisions, not the person who is sanding and filing and and um, and writing letters to, to non-performing mortgage uh, mortgagees. They don't want to talk to, that, that's not fundable. The strategist who knows how to build a portfolio of loans, that is fundable. Are you getting this? Is this making sense? This is lender perspective. They don't want secured loans. They don't want full doc. If they don't have to, they want to trust their borrower. And the way they trust their borrower is through, is through meticulous engineering of FICO and lender software measuring your borrower behaviors. More in just a second. So what do we do? How do we separate who we are from what we do? Well, we call it the smart code launch sequence. What that means is we research all 19 business verification databases to, for, for the landmines that are already there. You, you already, unfortunately, and again, I'm not blaming you, but they're already there, you guys. Comparing, we compare your current identity data points against lender approval requirements. Then we optimize your smart co business identity to hit the very lender criteria that's going to give you not a good approval, but the highest possible approvals. Remember the, remember the, the funding target. We want those bullseye amounts, high amounts. We want to be, we want partnership approvals. We revise your smart co state and federal entity filings to pass lender approval standards because they're already, uh, we already blew up our opportunities there. There may be some things we have to shift, reorganize, and refile. Create absolute certainty that your smart co is a highly fundable um, and ready to be approved. All right. Next, most real estate investors are worried they didn't start their business banking relationships the white way. Well, at least after they hear this presentation, they're like, what have I? Why didn't I know this? See what I mean about being worried, stressed, angry? <coughs> Excuse me. And you very well have wasted all this time with a bank that's going to prove you for nothing more than a credit card, even if you're there for 30 years. So what's the solution? We call it the Smart Co. Banking Blueprint. Now, this banking blueprint literally helps you avoid the funding killer landmines when you open your account. Quick story, true story, love this, love this guy. I call him Tennessee Tom. Tennessee Tom was work, work, working with a bank for seven years, seven years. He was he was bringing in, uh, he did um, short-term rentals in the Catskill Mountains, had cabins and, and retreats. And uh, he was dropping, I don't know, a $10,000, $20,000 every single month into his bank accounts. Nobody knew him. The couple of the tellers would, would call him by name. Nobody cared about him whatsoever comes to me in a presentation very similar to this one. His was live, but we're, we're live on, uh, on, uh, on a web training. He comes to me and says, I don't know what's going on, but I want, I want what you got. So it didn't take us any time at all. We had to close the current checking account because it was opened wrong. We opened up a new, same bank, same branch opened up a new account, we opened it the right way so that all of a sudden the triggers inside of their software goes, who's this guy? I'm telling you, there are giveaways. There are tests that lenders do to see what kind of borrow, how sophisticated of a borrower you are. It's all software. No joke, he starts running his same deposits, 10 to $20,000, only three months, running the traffic coming there, comes in to make a deposit, the bank manager comes up. He didn't know who it was, came out of an office, introduced himself as the bank manager, asked him to lunch. At lunch, he said, I've been told that I'm pre-authorized to approve you for a $150,000 business credit line. Guys, nothing changed except how he opened his checking account and how he ran his traffic models. Same money amount, but there are certain key indicators that lenders are looking for. I know this sounds, we could almost build up a resentment, you guys, for how 
meticulous this is. But if you hit these triggers, it's a windfall for us. Tennessee Tom, genius of a guy, he calls me up, he leaves me a voice message. And he is like, I don't know what's going on here. What have you done? Nothing has changed except I did what you told me, the way you told me to do it. I just got an approval for $150,000, three months, same numbers. It was awesome. And he's not the only one, but the only one I have time for tonight about this point. Now, next problem. Most real estate investors are furious when they learn, similar to Tennessee Tom, I share that example to, to prove this point. Leverage the checking account balance and cash flow that you already have to get a portfolio of wicked cool credit lines. Sorry, my language, but it's what they are. Again, Tennessee Tom. So what, what do we do? Uh, we're going, whoops. Uh, oh, yeah, the solution is, yes, there we go. So the solution is that um, through what we call lender approval trigger optimization. I know lots of big words, but it's, but they're accurate. And I'm going to just, I, it's like math. If you don't, the rules could be, especially like algebra, calculus, until you know the rules, it's completely baffling. And so this may seem a little overwhelming. And guess what? It is. But when you have a system to navigate it, it's effortless. And that's what we can do together. So what we, what we look at is we leverage your current cash resources to meet lender-specific baseline balance thresholds. Again, <laughs> that's a mouthful, but it's true. We direct the, per, the precise amount and timing, just like Tennessee Tom, the direct the amount and timing of your current cash flow through the right accounts that ensure predictable credit line and loan approvals. And then we cause lender internal performance software to notify bank personnel to offer you the pre-approved credit line, just like Tennessee Tom. Now, let me finish that story. You're like, how did the bank manager know to come out and introduce himself to Tom? Because the bank software said, this is a person of interest and this is how much you can give him. All the bank managers did, go introduce himself and tell him what the computer software already told him to do. We call this automatic underwriting. You guys have heard the term. How many of you in the last couple of months, three months, five months, six months, two years, how many of you have gone online and, and ordered a credit card? Hit submit and were approved or denied in, I don't know, 30 seconds? That's automatic underwriting. No human beings looked at that. They looked at your, they didn't look at your credit score. I don't know if we have time to even cover that tonight. It's not your credit score that got you approved. And the people with 800 plus scores but got denied, you know that that's true. It's not your credit score. They review 40 borrower behaviors that are all on your credit profile because their credit reports look very different than your credit reports, you guys. And those, those borrower behaviors are either AAA plus or Fs and everything in between. And that software is what told Tennessee Tom's bank manager, what tells your bank manager, or tells that computer software when you hit submit, approved or denied in seconds. That's not me, that's the software. So. Here's the beautiful part though, Ad admit with me, admit with me. There is a, in the back of our minds, there's this sense or feeling that lenders don't want to lend to us or that there's an adversarial relationship between them and us, right? They got the money, we need the money, we're a good person, why won't they give me the money? And the lenders are looking at, they're just trying to steal from me so I don't know who to trust right? We have this, we have this belief to get rid of that belief. Lenders moved to, to training their software with all the underwriting guidelines. So we think we're subject to lenders. Not anymore. You guys, lenders want to lend. The issue is, is that they've empowered the software 
with all the check boxes. And if you have a certain sum, when they check box, and it, remember I said triple A to, to, to F, if you have a certain grade or a certain numerical number, you get approved. That as long as you hit certain minimums, they don't care where the points come from. Uh, that's the reason why uh, 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 Will Lansing, CEO of FICO, wanted to meet wanted me to meet with the lender and and the FICO score development teams is because with that knowledge we can teach train lend uh, uh, borrowers how to modify their behavior to be trustworthy. Piece of cake. You can't game the system, and they know it. That's why. They, they've empowered me with this, with this, with, with this information, with this model. The fascinating thing is, is that now you have the power. You are in charge of your approvals, not the lenders. You just got to hit the check boxes, and if you do, you have total control or being approved. That's why I'm 95% plus on first time, uh, on first time, um, uh, and, and second time is even higher than that. And I go for three and five credit lines at a time, depending on your particular circumstances. So we have every likelihood of nailing this thing together because I'm not gonna have you apply until we've checked all the boxes, right? So that last piece, we, it causes lender internal performance software to notify bank personnel to offer you a pre-approved credit line. That is the magic, you guys. All right, next problem. Most real estate investors get worried when they learn that there are 19 business verification databases that monitor and control. Remember I said, we go ping them and see what landmines are already exist there. But what we do is we do a reputation management. And reputation management isn't like making sure that your criminal arrest record is on the 75th page of your file. That's not what I'm talking about uh, on Google. What we're doing is we're optimizing your, your smart co so that you can present it to lenders with confidence, knowing you're passing all of their approval readiness tests, right? We ensure that your smart co exceeds the authentication requirements of all those databases, those third-party databases that are really in charge of your approvals. And we meticulously build your KYC. Some of you may have heard, some maybe not, but your KYC is they, ha they have a know your customer because they want to avoid the restricted industries, you guys. That's what KYC is all about. So your smart code passes muster with every single one of the KYC criteria. And this process ensures that we separate your reputation for who you are versus what you do. That way you're not associated with restricted industry landmines. All right, that's optimizing your bid. Pretty cool, right? Is that is that all right? The second piece of this is to optimize you as the guarantor of these credit lines or these loans. Now, every one of these loans and lines do not report to your personal credit unless you go delinquent. So you are going to be responsible for these loans and lines of credit. Not since 2008, you guys, is there a small business loan where you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna use my EIN. Anybody who says you can use your EIN without a personal guarantee is gonna charge you crazy high interest rates. They're going to want your logins to, um, to your checking accounts so they can tap your account for weekly or daily payments. And they're gonna want your QuickBooks. Bef to, to before they approve you, and then they want your QuickBooks to make sure that you have the cash flow necessary to pay these high interest loans back. Anybody who tries to, oh, and I might as well dis dispel this mi misinformation. These bank loans and lines of credit do not, never have, and never will use a Paydex score that some of you may have been misled to believe is important for building credit. I'm sorry. Not one of the top 20 lenders use a Paydex score to evaluate whether or not they're going to give you money. So I, I, on behalf 
I regret to inform you that on behalf of all the operators out there who try and have you believe that you can get bank loans and lines of credit by going out and getting a Uline account or a Granger account or a Staples business credit card, you per on your EIN, they imply, unfortunately, they imply that you will then be able to get a business credit card, especially a business credit line or loan from a top tier bank. It has not happened since 2008 and it's not going to happen because the, it's a whole, it's a whole different game. So I, I am sorry if you have been led to believe or spent money on operators who use the term credit line to refer to a credit card with a limit. They're not the same thing. These are write a check, do a deal, transfer money into your checking account at prime plus 1%. That's what we're talking about tonight. Not credit card stacking, not hard money lending from, from fintechs, et cetera. Okay. So I know the energy just lowered, but it breaks my heart that so many operators out there are using pre-2008 sales that they can't fulfill. And they have, to they have to, one way or another, they have to deceive you into believing that opening up a Granger account and open up all these things and building an 80 plus Paydex score is gonna get you EIN-based credit lines and loans from top tier banks. Does not happen, does not happen. All right, let's get the energy back up. Next problem, so what, whoa, let's go back. There we are. So next problem is most real estate investors feel annoyed and even disillusioned when they learn that business funding approvals are not based on your business. This is why we're covering this. this even though we had to kind of take a minute there, you get to be a highly fundable borrower. Remember, you're the strategist in the business. You're the genius behind the capability to borrow. It's your borrower behaviors that they're measuring. So if you filed, I've got a solution for you, but if you filed a bankruptcy yesterday, sorry, you're not going to get 500 grand in business lines of credit tomorrow because it requires your personal credit profile to be average to good or better. But if you have a lot of recent negative accounts, I have a solution for you. And we'll talk about that in a minute but it's not 500K this week. So please don't leave because what are you gonna do when your credit is average to good or better and you haven't prepared for it? So you are in the right place if you've had a few, uh, a, a few uh, hiccups in your credit past. But it doesn't take away from the fact, you guys, that no matter what, this is what we are here for. We are here to make sure that we do all the right things to stop stepping on the funding landmines and your personal credit is vital. So it's not based solely on your business. You are the one who's giving them the borrow behaviors to trust you with unsecured stated income money. That is the magic. All right, so what's the solution? We call it the fu personal fundability roadmap. We review your personal borrow profile. By the way, your borrow profile is five fundability factors, not your credit score. Let, let's take, do we have a minute? Yeah, we have a minute. <clears throat> you guys, here's how it works. I'm going, in fact, I'm going off, I'm going off, uh, off uh, path here. Is that all right with you if I over deliver? Is that okay? Is that, all right. Um, your credit score is used with what's called a denial threshold. So the reason you get mail in your mailbox or emails from various and sundry banks pitching you to uh, with an offer 
is because your credit score is above the denial threshold. Meaning, if you don't have whatever it is, 680, 700, 720, some are six, uh, 760, whatever that denial threshold is, they don't even want you wasting their time because you're going to get denied absolutely. But let's say, let's call it 720. But if your credit score of the bureau you're pulling, you have three bureaus, it could be a different, uh, it could be a different score on each one of them. So the bureau they're pulling, if your score is above the denial threshold, then you're in the game. You just got welcomed into the Coliseum. You haven't won the fight. You just got invited to stay in the game. Then FICO gets out of the way. Lender approval software, the very software I was talking about where you're checking all the boxes. The approval software that measures your 40 borrower behaviors checks you out. That is what approves you, not the score. The borrower behaviors measured by the lender. Remember, FICO is a third party that measures lenders, what lenders report to the credit bureaus. FICO is out of the game. They're not evaluating you. The lenders are evaluating you because it's their money they're giving you. If you get approved over here, then it comes back over to FICO and it your score then determines whether you get a $2,000 approval, a $20,000 approval, or a $200,000 approval. That's where your score kicks back in, but only after you've been approved by lender software. Is this making sense, you guys? Is this... A a revelation finally about what is going on your score i don't even look at your score yeah I, I, if you had a discovery call with me i'm i'm saying i don't care what your score is i want to find out what your borrower behaviors look like we can change your score we got to modify your borrower behaviors so um so there are five fundability factors personal borrower profile um your identity profile your financial profile, your banking profile, and your credit profile. All of those create your borrower profile. Lenders are looking at way more than you've been led to believe and what we've been misrepresented, right? So this process reveals and removes funny killer landmines on your personal, personal borrower profile. And if we provide a custom, a custom optimization plan that takes you weeks, months, or even years into the future to optimize your borrowing potential, your borrower capacity, all right? Uh, next, most real estate investors feel worried and stressed about how to fill out a credit line application to make sure that they get approved. Here's what's crazy. The day before, here's part of the reason why we have a 95% uh, approval rate is because before we go, uh, before we send you in, we do what's called a pinnacle application launch. We literally go through and answer every question that we collect, The F, what we call the FAQs of lenders. What are the fr frequently asked questions lenders are going to answer? And you will have be able to answer with clarity and confidence. We, can, we, sh we give you a, a form that is pre-filled out with all of the things that we've already agreed upon you don't even know. Sorry, guys. I'm. I, I'm. I, it sounds like that I'm blaming you, and I'm not. I'm just frustrated. You don't even know how broad what lenders call a personal income or business revenue. We're not. We're not trained on how to do it. So we go through. We agree on all the numbers that fall within the statute and within banking policy. All of those are on this list. When you walk into the bank, you have everything to fill out your application exactly the way a lender is going to say yes to you. Huh. And then we can, this optimized personal borrower profile will increase the frequency and amount of your approvals because you're a bullseye borrower. You're not out here on the outer rings getting low approvals with high interest rates. Now, the problem, there's a misconception among real estate investors that it's hard to get approved for over 500 grand in these wicked awesome high value business credit lines and loans. 
but it's not. My accountability coaching is 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 different than many uh, uh, many coachings. We provide hour by hour access to your team via text, email, and Zoom calls. We leverage our Apex strategy sessions. They're highly focused opportunities to move through our steps together rather than going back and forth outside of the sessions. Do these, we'll check in. Do these, check in. What if we did them together? And then you have the, you have the data, we have the know-how. Between us, we kill it. We optimize your time and involvement. This whole process, you guys, requires 12, 15, 20 hours. I've had it take 20 for a couple of people who where we had to do a lot of hoop jumping. But 12 to 15 hours is, is our bullseye. That's not a lot of time required on your part. And we this process keeps you and your team accountable to the 100-day timetable target versus actual big old numbers that are staring us in the face when we meet what where should we be where are we so we can keep get, being successful huh. what do you think pretty cool right i've been doing this for 30 years and this is still just is my jam i absolutely love it but that's that's not just it R results are what speak. Results speak for themselves. I already shared with you what FICO thinks about this process, but funded clients, these fast track clients, and this is our this is one of our star performers. Some of you may know her, Teresa. Teresa P. I uh, I only use the last initial just because I want to enter people's privacy. Five hundred thousand dollar unsecured bank credit line portfolio. She was prepared to go full doc. And they said, no, your profile is unusually fine. That's a quote, unusually fine. And no taxes, no financials, no income verification. One page, simple application, 500 grand. The very 500 grand, I tell you, isn't just possible, it's likely given your particular circumstances. Um, then Robert V., $300,000 unsecured bank credit line portfolio. This, uh, it, when he got no taxes, no financials, no income verification. It is, uh, it, it's amazing. And he is a physician and he used some of his profits from, from his credit lines to open a clinic, a medical clinic in Guatemala that him and his children go to several times a year. To serve. So we haven't even had time tonight to talk about impact projects, funding. Remember, you're not borrowing the money for a deal. You're borrowing the money because, excuse me, you're a badass borrower and lenders want to lend to you. So you get to lend from that, that smart co, you get to lend to any project you wish. Guess who comes to me for funding? Non people who want to start a nonprofit. Lenders, that's a restricted industry. Lenders won't touch a nonprofit, but they'll touch a smart co. And guess who lends to their own 501c3? They actually donate and write it off up here and use it as capital down here. So, yeah, Robert, a, a superhero. Um, okay, so this is. This is Michael. Michael's the, the gentleman who beat me in fundings, $3.6 million in uh, fundings. A million of it, unsecured bank loans and lines of credit, 2 million in real estate credit line portfolio, no taxes, financials, or income verification. He was a flip machine. And then he moved into multifamily and he started flipping multifamily. Uh, yeah, love this guy. All right. Then, um, then there's Nathan W., $100,000 unsecured bank credit line. And then he said, like a, like a note investor would, he's like, but Merrill, I want to be able to carry, I, I want to be able to hold this for longer. And, and, and credit lines, you need to, to move traffic. You need to charge them up, pay them down. You don't want to use a note. Uh, you don't want to use a credit line to buy a note and then just hold a note forever because then you're not going to be able to grow that line because they like to see traffic. So what does he do? 
changes to a credit uh, to a loan same application he just checked a different box $95,000 um loan approval that he immediately started moving in notes so and that's just so far i have a meeting with him next week uh, for his next bank no taxes no financials no income verification and then uh uh this these partners are amazing $200,000 unsecured bank credit line portfolio, 580 in an unsecured stated in a uh, 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 real estate uh, credit line portfolio, no taxes. Starting to get boring, right? No taxes, no financials, no income verification. But the thing was, is here was their magic. One of, uh, she was in the military and she was in Delaware. He was in North Carolina. The business was in Georgia. We could, it takes a little bit longer, but I'm telling you, we, whatever your circumstances are, we know, and we've done it all. <laughs> uh, there is nothing new under the sun. And then one of my, uh, uh, one of my clients, he has now become my longevity um, doctor. Um, we met in the business and then he's become a friend. Um, I helped him, we'll start at the bottom, $2.5 million, 624 acre Utah ranch with a retreat lodge that he invites me to go snowmobiling or up for the weekend to be able to just hang out. Um, and I helped him get that plus the 150 unsecured commercial credit line and, and a, oh, that should say 300. Sky, will you remind me that first one should say $300,000 unsecured bank credit line. Great, tiny story. He got his first approval, $100,000 uh, credit line. I told him the traffic patterns to run and he literally uh, went back in two months later and asked for 300 and he got it. Movement of money. You, you guys have played the cash flow game, things like that. Movement of money is what makes it attractive, especially to lenders who get to lend $10 for every $1 that they have in deposits. We hit all the right triggers, everything happens. So you guys, really, the question is, how fast can you get to 500,000? Or if you only need 100 grand or you need 2 million, you and I need to know much more about each other in order to be successful. So. I've prepared for you an opportunity for you to be able to not just learn how to be a fundable business, but also how you personally as the principal of the business are highly fundable. So that lenders look at you and go, holy schmoly, I want to give this person money in their business. So I've prepared what I call the Business Funding Summit. It is a two-day event two-day event where you get to see how you stack up in all these areas that we covered tonight, how you stack up against lender guidelines and what to do about it. So all I need you to do is go to businessfundingsummit.com, businessfundingsummit.com, check it out. Everything you need to know is there, ready for you to register for this two-day event. 97 bucks. Come on. This is a giveaway. The promise you get to make to me at the end of the funding summit is you get to write your own witness, your own review, your own testimonial of what your experience was. Is that a deal? Attend the business funding summit, and then you get to share with others, people who are sitting in your seat right now who don't know what to think about this stuff. I want you to be able to tell them what your experience is. Fair? It has been a pleasure spending this time with you. My name is Merrill Chandler, the founder and CEO of the Get Fundable Movement. And I will see you guys at the Business Funding Summit.